Hello, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. You're watching TCM, where we're commemorating an ugly anniversary. 75 years ago, Hollywood committed a nearly unpardonable act of self-sabotage. The industry willingly did the bidding of an ill-informed and bellicose congressional committee that was lazily, yet aggressively, investigating alleged communists inside the movie industry. In November of 1947, all the big studios in town agreed to blacklist anyone the committee investigated who refused to cooperate and swear fealty to the committee. Cooperating meant naming names, telling the committee that you weren't a communist, but here's who might be. More often than not, the committee already had the names. What the committee really wanted from its witnesses was a, a demonstration of loyalty. Hundreds of writers, actors, producers, and directors were blacklisted, kept from working in the movies or in television. Each film we have tonight examines the blacklist era in Hollywood. Up next, a movie that effectively shines a light on the tragedy of the blacklist while also detailing the creative ways a handful of blacklisted writers managed to engineer a way around the ban. From Columbia Pictures in 1976, The Front. Woody Allen leads the cast as Howard, a New York schlub who works as a cashier in the 1950s. Howard's friend, a TV writer named Alfred, played by Michael Murphy, has an idea that will benefit both men. Suspected of communist sympathies, Alfred has been blacklisted and can't work. He wants Howard to serve as his front, meaning Alfred will write the scripts and Howard will then pass them off as his own and get a cut of the payday. During this arrangement, Howard becomes friendly with a TV comedian, played by Zero Mostel, who faces ruin as the anti-communist investigation begins to close in on him. The Front is a rare film for Woody Allen, whose only involvement is as an actor. Appropriately, Martin Ritt directed with a screenplay by Walter Bernstein, both of whom were blacklist victims during the 1950s. As you'll see in the end credits, many of the talented people who collaborated on the film were blacklisted as well. From 1976, released by Columbia Pictures, The Front. The Front marked the final time Zero Mostel appeared on screen in a feature film. And since Mostel had been blacklisted himself, this was intensely personal for him. While many in Hollywood rightfully feared the House on american Activities Committee, Mostel unflinchingly faced the vacuous publicity-seeking committee members. Labeled a communist sympathizer and dragged before the committee, Mostel refused to identify any of his friends or colleagues as communists, Instead, he mocked the proceedings and those in Hollywood who had cooperated with the witch hunt, including a memorable reference to 20th Century Fox as 18th Century Fox. Mostel patterned the role of Hecky Brown partly on his own experiences and partly on those of blacklisted actor Philip Loeb. Loeb, a popular radio and television star, had been a friend of Mostel's. He tried to navigate the blacklist, but when he could no longer provide for his family and facing significant financial demands, Loeb killed himself in his hotel room. Unlike Mostel's character, he didn't jump out of a window. He deliberately overdosed on sleeping pills. Mostel felt he had an obligation to remind Americans of this dark chapter of Hollywood's past. It's part of the history of this country, Mostel said, and a lot of kids don't even realize that blacklisting ever existed. Coming up, a B-movie writer's life has changed in a most unexpected way after he's suspected of being a communist. The Majestic, directed by Frank Darabont, starring Jim Carrey, is next on TCM.